In this video, we're going to continue to explore Armor Paint tools. And we're going to get into the toolbar here on the left and talk about brushes and also the eraser tool, the fill tool. And these are the, 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 the basic tools that we find and that can also apply to what we learned so far with layers, with uh, materials, textures, and so on. So for this lesson here, I'm going to use um, a couple of scenes. So if you go into turbosquid.com, you can download the same scenes and you can work with me in uh, play around with this scene. Now, the first one, it's called the Modern Bedroom Design Archivist 3D Model. And it's from the boring shop here. So you can download it for free. And you're gonna download the obj because this is this is the one i'm gonna use and the 3d leather jacket it's a 3d leather jacket pbr by cc studio x and again i'm gonna download the obj and also this is a complete model of a human and it's uh, called the 3d model marina uh, 1276 by Numic Digital. Now, why I've chosen this? Because I think that you can use Armor Paint in many different fields, and we already seen that, like on characters and armors. Uh, you can use it in uh, video game assets, but you can also use it, for example, in product design, fashion design, and also in a limited way, you can use it in interior design. So to create an, uh, a concept design and for an interior or for furniture, furnishing and so on so i chosen i've chosen these three different scenes so we can like experiment a little bit on this tree and the first one i will show you uh, i will not show you all the process that we already seen in the other lessons on how you can uh, open up import and also assign materials work with materials because we already done that many times so I will just open up my scenes that I have prepared here. And the first one is gonna be the bed scene. So I will click this one here. Now, what, what is the, the real limit of armor paint? I think that armor paint, well, I, I guess that armor paint was designed to work with one single object. But even though we can also work in more complex scene like this one, where we have like, um, kind of a room or you can work also like in an entire building it's pretty difficult to move around because we don't have cameras but yeah, with just one camera it's pretty uh, easy but in other software for example in Maya or well any other 3D software we have a lot of tools to manage really complex scene and we don't really have that here in Armor Paint still we can navigate pretty easy we can move from an object to the other especially if we have everything separated like this and each single object can have its own uv map and that's important if you want to uh, work with um, different objects and paint uh, paint out different objects so if you only have one giant object that's going to be really difficult to work with your scene and also it's going to create like a, a something, a, some strange effect on your scene. Now, I already create some materials here and some I have imported and I used the same materials that I used in previous lessons. So from the GitHub materials and samples, but also I show you how you can create all of this stuff here. So I'm not going to explain it again. And let's pretend that we want to start brand new. So I will create a new layer. Now, each time you create a new layer, this goes on top of the others and will uh, like hide everything else if it's uh, full. So if I select this one here and I uh, start to use the fill tool, now this is going to fill everything up with the material that I chose here. So I will click here and click on my object and this is going to fill everything up. Now this is a completely basic uh, white material and everything turns white. Okay, now I want to create a new one. So I will click on new layer. So I'm creating a new layer and I want to start to paint right away. Now what happens It's nothing happened. 
well, actually it is happening, but it's not visible because I'm painting with the same color and the same material on the same material. So I'm not able to see anything. Now to do that, I need to change the color. How do I change the color of my brush? Now, do uh, can I can I change it from here at the top? No, I need to select a new material or create a new material if I don't have one. So we create a new one, and I will call this paint. I will start to paint around. Now I will select here a color and start to paint around. And look what happens here. Everything loose looks uh, pretty confusing because I am painting on this surface here, but it's painting everywhere. And this is the first thing that is going to bother you a lot, especially if you have a complex scene like this and not one single object. Now, what's happening here is that you are working with all the objects all together at once. So you want to change that from here. Change from shared to, for example, one single object. For example, could be my... Uh, let's say wall out, which is the outside wall. All right, now I, I'm focusing my attention on this wall and I can just paint on this one. There you go. Now I already painted on this wall other layers, so you can see the layers beneath, especially if they have 3D effects with normal and bump textures. Okay, but well, just wanted to show you here how this it's uh, gonna look. Now, if I use the eraser, I can erase the paint that I have applied. Now, if I don't have anything beneath that uh, paint, so if I don't have a base color, I that will turn black. Okay, so let me show you here. This will look like this if I don't have this one underneath. And also I can use the 2D view here at the top and you can activate the UV map to check the UV of a particular uh, thing you are working on. Now it's gonna show you all the UV maps in the scene. So if, if I want to see only the, this one, I need to go to wall out here and that's gonna show me just that one. So I can either paint on the 3D view here or in the 2D space. Now uh, the zoom, it's uh, important because if I zoom a lot out, the brush is gonna be bigger if I zoom in a lot, it's gonna be smaller. So if I do, if I work here, that's gonna like be the same if I zoom in or out. But if I work here, you can see here, it's getting bigger and bigger. The more I zoom, the more it's getting bigger. The more I zoom in, the more it's getting smaller. And I can also change here with the eraser. Okay, so you can choose where you want to work and in this case I'm going to use the 3D view because it's more simple to understand. So I want to decrease the radius and now you can see different um, radius here and also well I will show you the UV scale in a bit it's a little bit more complicated and if you do this here, nothing will happen basically because this is working with images, not with just color, plain simple color. Also, the angle will not be visible here because if I change the rotation of my circle, it's still going to be a circle. Opacity. Now, this is, can be seen here and it's pretty nice because I can, like in reality, go over many times before I can actually get the full color. And this is something... I think it's, uh, you know, pretty realistic. So you can change the opacity. You can change the hardness. Hardness, it means that it will be more blurred on the edges. So here is like a middle weight. This is full hard and this is a very soft. Well, this is also invisible. It's too soft to be invisible, but look at the edges. So you can see the difference here. Now, each time I can also delete from here and also the uh, the eraser has its own hardness and opacity and radius and other stuff here. Okay, you also have symmetry if you are working like with symmetrical uh, objects. So symmetry is based on the origin of the model, but 
for some for some of these we're gonna get to this later on okay now uh just to keep it simple let's get back to the brush here and i want to increase the opacity okay other thing you can do is change the blending mode now we already talked about the blending mode for the layers now this is the same exact thing when you're working with uh, brushes it's like working in photoshop for those of you who already work in photoshop they will feel really comfortable with this now you you can also create multiple layers and blend them from here and i suggest that you keep everything as separated as it as you could because it's then uh, more it's easier to manage later all the different layers because once you paint over uh, some some particular effect that's gonna be deleted you you cannot go back there but if you separate two effects with two layer with two different layers then yes you can access them back otherwise this is just like painting on pixels once the pixel is painted you cannot get it back well you can go back with the history you can go back also with ctrl z yes but that's the only way if you're gonna save everything and you're gonna come back later you won't find anything unless you store that in a different layer you can see here this is the one that i already did and they were on separate layers so i can i am able to get them back otherwise this will be lost now I want to get to this other part, which is um, a more complex object. It's, it has a lot of surfaces. Uh, I believe that this is also wrong in its UV map. Uh, there is something that is not right. So basically what happens when something in, is not right on one of these? Let me create, well, a new layer. And this time I want to use a material to paint, not a simple color like that but a material with sorts of this is a color ramp which is kind of a, a texture well i think yeah it has a noise texture actually and it's uh, managed by this color ramp so they get this effect here now if i paint here with this material look how it's gonna look like now here on this surface it's looking good but in this other one, it's looking really stretched. Now, this is because there is something wrong with the mapping. So I need to go to the plugin here and do the unwrap again. Or basically, I have to pay more attention where I get my models from or when I am modeling them in another 3D application like 3ds Max or Cinema 4D or whatever. So be careful on your UV mapping. That should be correctly placed. Now. You, I will show you here also the difference between the UV radius and UV scale. Now, if I change here the UV scale and set this to four, right now it's gonna, it's not gonna change anything because I have to change the um, way I am painting. So if I use the UV map, that's gonna give me this result here. If I use Tri Planner, this is another way to paint, and you can see it will look different. There you go. Now let's change again the scale. And now you can see that it changes. So now I can decide the how big my uh, image should be or how small. I can work basically like I'm working with tiling and scaling the material. And also project, it's another way to paint and Okay, now let's paint with more complex materials. For example, here I've used these planks materials from GitHub uh, Armor Paint library. And you can do it yourself or you can use another material. And so basically I want to paint here on this outside uh, ground floor. So I will create a new layer and I will select here the ground out. And now I can paint. So if I want to paint with this one here, I can select it, I get to the paint, and I start to paint around with this. Now this is going to look like uh, really big or really small, depends on what I do here. Now let's try with UV map. There you go, it looks okay, but I can also work with the UV scale. 
There you go. Now you can also right click here and decide that if you want to duplicate this, but also you can decide if you want to change again the way it's going to be mixed with what's beneath. And also you can decide if you want to show, for example, the base color or not, or the opacity or the normal or other stuff concerning that particular material and its channels. Okay, now I want to paint on this floor and let's create a new material. I have already created a new layer and apply it to the ground cube and now I will create a new material. Well, I will keep it white for the moment and I will start to paint. Now you can see here I'm painting just like I'm painting in reality and again I can change all that stuff that we've seen before but also I can change here some parameters for this material. So here if I can change the opacity and also I can change for example the metalness and everything else we did for the material so far can be applied also to brushes. Now one thing is the material and one thing is the brush that we are using. So if you move from the material panel here to the brush panel. Now here is where you can create different brushes. So this one should be the main one. So you will always find one and then you can create a new or you can right click and duplicate an existing one or you can export them and use it into another armor paint scene and so on. Or you can import it. Now I'm going to create a new one and if you double click here or you click on the nodes you will see the nodes concerning the brush. So this is similar to the material editor. It has a lot of nodes that you can use and this is this one are the basic and you can see these are the same that you see here. So for example let's start to uh, draw here a line. Well it's uh, too I want to have a little bit more of opacity so I'm gonna get back to my material. So don't be don't mistake the, the one with the others. They are pretty similar. Okay, now this is pretty dense here. And let's change the, la the, the lazy radius first and let's see what's gonna happen. This is uh, just basically uh, showing the uh, cursor on uh, before the actual um, stroke that we are doing. So just play around with this and figure out what they do. Now you can see I'm start to seeing some steps there. Now if I increase the lazy steps, I'm gonna get something like this, kind of a dashed line, or in this case it's points that are really um, distant from each other. So it's another effect that you can customize here. And again, just play around. Depends what you want to do here. Uh, or, or you can go back to the um, one that was in the first place. And now let's, uh, we, we already know all of this actually. So the one that we don't know is stencil. Stencil is pretty cool. Now all you need to have is an image like this one here. Now I will show you here like double click. This is kind of an alpha channel that you can create yourself in Photoshop or you can find on the web. Just look for uh, alpha channel like that. Now I want to place this into the stencil right there and now I can brush everywhere by, oh, you can see the image on the foreground. Now that's gonna work like a stencil, like an image in front that you can paint. Okay, now let's take this off. This is gonna deactivate my stencil and there you go. So I can like print from a shape. And it's, it's pretty cool. And also I can use the image texture here if I want to use another type of um, opacity. So this is standard opacity. It's going to look like a circle. And if I use this, it's going to be different. It's going to be more realistic as well. You can say, see there. Let's increase the radius a little bit. Now it's really looking like I'm painting stuff on this uh, floor really cool and uh, you can also change now the uh, well the radius of course well let me delete a little bit and you can use this also as a eraser as you can see it's gonna look more realistic as well there you go 
Now let me change the angle. So now if I paint like that, it's gonna look like that. And let me change the angle. Okay, you can you can see there are some differences. Okay, I'm just messing around here with my radius and my lazy step, lazy radius. I want to get some uh, dashed lines, like something like that. Now you can see now this moves basically according to my cursor. And if I set directional, now it's gonna follow my direction. And that's gonna be looking like that. And you can also create like seams or other stuff if you change the direction of this. So if you change images. Okay, I have deleted everything again. And let me show you another effect here. So if we use some nodes, you can see there are many nodes. You have to spend some time here to figure out what these are about. But for example, ramp, uh, sorry, random. Uh, this is working, for example, if, when you want to select not a single value, but you want to customize the value. So for example, if I set this to the radius, I can create something that varies in the size of the stroke. So I can get more randomness and I can use this maybe also in the angle or in the hardness, wherever I want to test this. It's gonna create many different effects. Now you just have to play around. Now let's get to the next topic, which will be the jacket. And I want to show you something a little bit different. Now you can paint in Armor Paint also in 3D. So Armor Paint is not for sculpting. You cannot actually 3D model or 3D sculpt your asset, but you can do something pretty close, which is using the normal paint. Now, let me show you first, if you want to use, for example, some uh, sculpting tool, you can use Mudbox. And if you go in our YouTube channel and you go in the playlist, you will find a course in Mudbox and also in 3ds Max, Cinema 4D and also other software here at the top of the playlist page. So also please support us with the subscription and with the community page here with our projects. This is also a PayPal link account for a small donation that will be appreciated. Also, you can check the store. Now let's get back here and how we can model with 3D normals. Now, all we need to do is we have to create a uh, material and then we have to only use the normal map. So you can use any texture that you have already uh, uploaded or you can look for other texture on the web. If you search for normal texture, you can just select one. You also have this kind of um, elements that you can insert. Well, let's try this for example. So if I save this, into my armor paint uh, normal folder. Make sure it's a JPEG or PNG and nothing else. So this is my normal. And let's call these dots. Okay, so I will bring this in just by going in my normal folder and taking this into my project. And now let's change. Well, let's create a new one basically. So we can do that from the beginning. And let's take this into the normal map. And also you might want to use here some uh, texture coordinate and also some mapping so you can define the scale. Otherwise it could look too big. So let's get into this one into UV and this one into the vector. And let's try, for example, to set a uh, bigger tiling. Okay, there you go. So it looks like I am sculpting, but I'm not. I'm like creating something which is um, a fake 3D effect. And we already seen that with normal maps and also with bump map. If you don't have normal maps, you can use the bump map and convert it into a normal map. We already seen that with this node before. And also you can use the height. So you can create 3D painting basically. Now I'm only painting with the, um, with the normal effect here. 
because I'm actually painting below the actual um, layer where I place the uh, model original material. So if I deselect this one, I can see that this is white. Now, if I don't want the white, just remember that you can right click here and take off the base color. Okay, also you can find the, all the texture for this material into the project folder. And you can say, see here, I have deactivated to normal to, to show you more uh, easy what I am doing here. But this is the job that this guy has been doing f to create this jacket here. It's working with this, uh, you know, kind of really small brush, creating all these seams and zippers and all that stuff. You can do it with a lot of patience, but you can do it. And this is kind of uh, creating fashion design, something like that. Now, you can also check the mode here. This is useful if you want to see, for example, only the base color, or only the normal, uh, only the occlusion. So you can isolate uh, metallic roughness and all the effects that you are actually applying. And now let's get to the last examples, which is this female character here, when I can work uh, creating again fashion design and painting around having fun and so on but yeah I want to show you another tool that can be useful now you can see here I'm using mask now this is another option that you can do now let me take everything off from this except one base color okay and then we will create a new um, layer and also a new material let's make create blue and I will apply a texture here and apply to the opacity and this is like painting with the mask we already seen that i believe but we can also do some other stuff here we can also change the where we want to paint here by masking so if i it's probably the same thing here now here we can change it with the vector but if i place this as a mask like that black mask oh sorry right click to mask now I can paint but I can paint only only in the white parts of this so I cannot paint everywhere just where the mask oh sorry I'm painting actually on the mask so I need to select the layer all right now I can paint only where the mask allows me to paint so that's on the white spots it's gonna look a lot uh, with a lot of paint on the gray spots it's gonna look like uh, mild blue and on the black spots of the mask it's gonna look like uh, I don't have any blue paint at all now this is I can use a mask now if I create a new la layer again I can also use a black mask and I can bake the curvature on the appiant occlusion as we did in the previous video so if I bake the curvature on this mask here okay you can see there it's baked. Now, when I paint on this, I will only be, only be painting. Sorry, it just duplicated that. Okay, now I want to paint, not bake, so I will get back to paint. Now, if I paint now, I can only paint on the white parts of this mask. So if I double click, I can see here, it's taking all the edges. This is what curvature does. It's gonna focus on all the more exposed part of your model so it's gonna kind of um, underline all those parts here so well it's just another way to paint it's just another way to uh, create uh, different effects so it's not gonna be a uniform paint but it's gonna be guided but by, by these masks and this is gonna create more uh, I don't know effects that you can use you can also use the ambient occlusion and try something with that as well uh, you can see here all the all these parts uh, of the, uh, the the jeans and the clothing are like more exposed right now, so they are like underlined. So I think it's a it's a good way to experiment with the painting as well. Now, when you want to paint and you want to get uh, more realistic, you have to do a lot of layers. Don't create a layer, just go paint like this, because yeah, this looks cool, but it's not pretty realistic. This doesn't look like a paint. So what you want to do probably is to add some masks and some stuff around 
to make it more realistic and for example here I can again get into my brush and place here this as a um, opacity mask also here and I think this is looking you know a pretty different effect and in my opinion it's much more realistic than before so it depends on you on your creativity on your fantasy but you can see how you can apply armor paint with many different uh, scenarios you can really play around with a lot of stuff here like clothing and interior design and whatever i think it's a really versatile uh, tool that you can use okay i've played around a little bit and i will continue because this is really fun so thank you for watching this video and see you in the next lesson